Hallelujah. Um, I feel like this is something the Lord has also, you know, walked in me, blessed me with, and something that I, I mean, we started it yesterday in church, and oof, it was really, it was, it's deeper than I even thought, and it's going to be a journey, something I want to walk people on, and um, so you might see the flower of church, but please bear in mind, the idea is I want to start it, I want to teach us um, on what we should look out for in this new land. And for the purpose of this conversation, we're going to be looking at the issue of relationships in the good land. Relationships in the good land. Relationships in the good land. As we are a joint venture. <laughs> This morning, the Lord was even speaking to me about some things, about how things are evolving in our lives, in our ministry, even personally. Um, we're all in the good land. God has spoken about well, the place. In church, it was good land. For us, it was well, the place. But honestly, I tell you, it's the same narrative of what God is doing in our lives. I think yesterday as well, this week has just been quite intense in the sense that I've, uh, the, the goodness of God... I'm thinking about things and God is manifesting it. Somebody random, like I would never have thought about, reached out to me. I was just thinking about some things I needed to do, just talking to God about some things I wanted and some things. And someone just called me randomly to, you know, do something for me. I'm like, this is totally unprecedented. The person and also I know that we're in a good land and I'm just seeing how the Lord is highlighting different things in good land. So if you're ready for this journey, um, I wanted to come here, even if you are an expert in relationships, with a hopeful mind to see how you can learn. And also come here with your, um, as we begin to interact, that goes from next week, um, to have that heart to learn. One of the scriptures that started this for me, the Lord laid on my heart was, you ask not because you have not because you, you, you don't have, you have not because you didn't ask. But I mean, the context of that scripture is more than that. So I, sometimes like, Maybe I should just use the scripture, knock and you'll find, ask, sorry, ask and you shall re yeah, receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open. God wants to bless you relationships. Why is this important? In this good land, one of the currencies is relationships. It's not just going to be your money. It's not just going to be your, your skills, your spirituality, your, these things are supposed to impact one another, one of them is your relationship. So let's start. What is relationship? A relationship is the way two or more people are connected or the way they are be they or the way they behave towards each other. A relationship is the way two or more people are connected or the way they behave towards each other. Please take note of the connected and behavior because I'm going to be sharing some things about that. Now, if you look at synonyms about of relationships, you see connection, you see association, and a couple of things like that. You know, it's, it's, it is a connection, there's an association. So who you're in relationship with is also like who you are in association with. And antonyms, you see divorce, disunity, difference. I was a bit um, amazed that divorce is one of the antonyms of relationships. Antonyms is the opposite of relationships. And I'm like, whoa. So it's not just married people that are divorcing themselves in this time, um, we're seeing people, there's a lot of, there could be divorce in relationships, meaning a separation in a relationship. And I think God forbid, some people have divorced themselves from divine, divine relationship, divine covering, divine um, things. And I pray in the name of Jesus will not make that mistake. I am one person that have had so many, I have scars as regards this issue of relationships. And I also have testimonies as regards this relationship. One of the things that overwhelms my life, the source of my glow and my joy is God. And sometimes it powers it, not even sometimes, and it powers it through different channels. This joy of my life, this peace of my life, it powers it through different channels. And one of them is actually relationships across all level. Something interesting happened yesterday, but before I get there, note to self, when we're talking relationship, we think about connection, think about value, think about behavior. Regardless of the relationship, is it career relationship, is it marital relationship, is it friendship, whatever you're thinking about, think about connection. Have you met people that your heart, you just said my heart was burning. Have you met people and you felt like, oh my God, I feel like I've known this person all my life. Have you met people where you feel like I just need to be hearing their voice. There's something that happens, there's connection. Have you met people that their value, your love for God, your passion for humanity, your desire for change, your desire for transformation, it also impacts 
I see a lot of people trying to force things in places where there is no value from even the church they try to attend to. They, they don't they don't have shared value. And you can't talk about relationship and not talk about behavior because it says the way people are connected and the way they behave to themselves. There's something about behavior. How how is this? How are you being treated? And I'm not talking about interpreting from a very selfish or self implied vision or point of view, but actually from generally, how does this person treat people? How was the relation? What's the behavior? How do you feel? How are you changing? How are you becoming? So yes, um, want to go beyond the surface. What I'm saying is that there, there is the surface relationship and there's nothing wrong with that. There are certain relationships that you cannot go beyond the surface with. You're not lying, you're transparent, but you're not, they don't, they don't have the opportunity to embrace or enjoy your vulnerability. Now, however, the problem is a lot of believers, a lot of Christians are staying on the surface to build relationships. There's something, there's a problem right now. There's a problem right now. There's a problem right now. It's almost like people don't know how to relate with themselves else apart from, oh, except they can put it in the, except they can put it in the um, what's it called? I said they can put it in the box of, oh, um, they are my this, they are my that. If they cannot put it in the box of, how do I explain? Always help me. Label of son. I don't know what's going on in Nigeria. I say everybody's looking for, and I know it's because the Lord has blessed us with leadership and um, pioneering spirit, but it can be very disruptive and undirected because now it's like everybody just wants to be a father and a mother. Don't get me wrong. God has raised us to father and mother people, but it just feels like people don't want to do anything. Is it that I am the mentor or you are the mentee? It's like that's the only kind of relationship that exists. Well, that is important because you also don't want to go and just see someone the Lord has raised as your spiritual leader or spiritual mentor or whatever mentor as just a friend because that's just that's a good to have not necessarily the must have god brings a relationship into your life or there is a must have of every relationship there's some relationship that if you don't get to be friends but they are doing what they need to do in your life in they have to be friendly even if you're not friends with people you have to be a friendly person meaning you, at least you did you you owe everybody honor right at the same time i remember when apostle was saying some ministers don't know how to be friends They've covered it up with spiritual son, oh, my kingdom partner, oh, my sister and brother, and it's just surface. They really don't know, and you don't want to be caught there. Where where do you lie your head? Some of us are so quick to bring out the gift card. I remember one message Apostle Femi preached, said, bring out that withered hand. We're so quick to want to, we're too packaged, put together. You know, you always want to, you know, almost like total superiority complex in dealing with our friendship. Is that because you have a bigger, maybe a bigger social status, bigger spiritual gift or whatever it is, that is a reason. But the, if, I, if I sit down and go through that with people, I realize that there is actually an insecurity that is the cause of that. But we'll get there in a minute. So we want to go beyond surface. I feel like in this good land, God is calling us. And the Lord gave me a model yesterday. I shared with them yesterday that I, I, I didn't read this and I didn't see this. Just, I was just playing with some idea in my head and it gave me these three types of relationships to desire in this world of place. They could be more, but I they are, they, are, they, are, they filter into many things. But I, the Lord gave it to me as three types. And I'm going to use the Trinitarian example. What do I mean? I use the concept of Trinity to explain the kind of relationships the Lord probably is inviting us to have. One is Father. One, second is Son. That is the Holy Spirit. No, this is the three in one, the Trinity. And the Lord, I was just trying to see how the levels of relationship that we could have. But we're going to be unpacking each of them by God's grace from next week. I'm just going to run through today, just like an introduction. Now, when you talk about the Father, everybody needs to have a covering. Um, the Father is not in the maleness of the word, but I'm talking about it in terms of covering so it could be a mother it could be a father it could be parents it could be a leader this is where you have it could be your career cover everybody needs to have such in their lives and i use the scripture jeremiah 315 i will give you shepherds after my own heart it could be a sponsor in your career for those in the corporate setting you hear stuff like sponsors i remember for someone i know there's this platform that it doesn't even know exists as an organization because it's not advertised it's not open you can't apply for it somebody has to recommend you there are some things that in the corporate world they call them by sponsorship somebody has to recommend. oh yeah i don't i don't do politics i don't kiss ass attitude i don't care attitude that we have going on it's great but you, it can't take you so far 
in the sense, I'm not asking you to be, to be using eye service and all of that. But what I'm saying is there is a place that the Lord has created covering for different areas of our lives. Some of you are blessed that your spiritual parents could also be your mentor, could also be your, um, this, um, they, could, they function in different parts, your therapist or whatever, because of the skill set and qualification they have, but some of you don't. So these are things you want to pray about and ask the Lord, you know, and you have to be clear about that. Let me share a testimony. I shared it with ministry team this week. Um, I, I need to write a paper. I need to work on something. And as I was just preparing um, to, it's been on my heart, like the, my timelines, the things I need to work. I'm just having challenge me. And I've really enjoyed that course. I've got as it really helped me, but I'm having different ideas. It's so wide. I'm trying to narrow down. I see the nudging of God um, through spending my teachings, trying to nod me to, that they feel like I'm excellent in this area. Do I want to look into that? Well, I'm looking at my timeline. It feels, oh, for whatever reason, the Lord started messing up, the devil started messing up my mind. And I just like declaring, in the scripture on Thursday, I just shut everything down. I'm like, you know what? Let me just spend time. Let me just pray. And the Lord, I just kept saying, ask for help, ask for help. So I started asking the Lord for help, receiving help, claiming help, declaring there's a spirit in man. You know, just like feeling inadequate, not able to, not up to the task, feeling very challenged, even with the way I'm supposed to write and everything. Anyways, long and short story, at the end of the day, I remember um, I, I went for an event and the person that spoke at the event, I just, I just it felt like I saw this person. I've known him for years. He's, he's one of the pastors in church. I'm like, wow. You know, so I just whispered to the person around, like, my God, this man is solid. I love him. I like the way, you know, and the person looked at me and said, ah, doctor, ah, this is a professor now. I said, what? Told me the person's specialization. I just, after service, I went to the person. I said, sir, please, I would like to speak with you. I said, oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And we spoke long and short. This man has a PhD in the paper I'm trying. His PhD thesis is in one paper now when i say when you say paper and the person looking at maybe five thousand a man did the thesis meaning he has taken five three to five years of his life to research in the area i'm currently trying to uncover you know i have some great ideas and not just in that area in the african context the way i'm saying it when i came back and i was sharing with them and it was it could see all my emotion in the african context guys it was crazy Remember in the morning, I asked for help. Remember the scripture, it gives shepherds of their own. The Lord blessed me now with a mentor, an academic mentor to help me walk on a journey. You see, what was bringing anxiety, panic, fear, you know, um, turbulence in my life was resolved by the Prince of Peace, by an introduction of a person. I don't know if somebody caught that. The he, he, God did not, he did not, he, the peace was not just by, oh, spray me water, or you don't want to say five words, he introduced a person. I'm telling you, the introduction of a person in your life can trigger a change, can also destroy you. The introduction of an, an influence in your life, the introduction of a covering, of a leader, and just sticking, sticking to it. The, God, the way God solved the problem first was introducing a person to me. I know what's funny, that day was when, um, a, a day before, was when Sister Toy was talking about, may you find your just begin to pray about your Josephs, begin to pray about people like Mary, you're about to birth, God has given this vision, but you need a covering, you need these people around you, these are things you need to be clear about, and I'm not even, I'm not, and guess what, it's mutual, the man already is like, oh my God, I see, and you know what blew my mind, I had a meeting with him yesterday. Now you are going to meet him. Like, you know me. Okay. You know me. Like, I'm already planning a couple of things for the ministry team next year. And I'm like, because it's been on my heart about setting things the Lord was asking us to do by the grace of God. And one of the things he said, it blew my mind to realize the Lord gave me a vision 41 years ago. And it's interesting that myself and some people were like part of the fulfillment of the vision God gave him 41 years ago. I was saying some things. The man is like, oh my God, oh my God. At the point, it's like, I'm so sorry, this is emotional. And I'm saying something, we're completing each other's statements. I'm like, oh my God. And it, no, that's the, that is the, that's what baffles me about God. God started with a person 41 years ago. Gosh, I was not born 41 years ago. And the man has carried his vision. He said, to be honest, at the point, he thought it was not going to happen anymore. Like, what is this, God? And I'm having a conversation where we're thinking of doing publications together. We're thinking like it's going to be so mutually beneficial to both of us. I'm looking at someone that is ready to walk with me on this journey of exploring this audacious thing that God has put in front of me. Why did I share that story? Sometimes you, you need that covering. 
a lot of us think coven is just um talking about um oh spiritual that's great but it could be god can give you a leader and it can that coming can come as a leader you can tell some people you are led through certain resources books teachings things god has god has a way of bringing things around you but you must be able to identify i said what if i didn't see it when you begin to ask god for help you must be positioned to identify that help what if i didn't see it what if i wasn't searching in my quest for answer made me see this but i've seen this person and some of us, it might be people in our space. It might even be the way you look at your pastor. It might be the way the Lord reveal your leader to you, your parent to you, your mentor to you, that book to you. I remember one day Reverend Victor was sharing with me how, and he said in an interview, how after five years of his marriage, he was already, you know, feeling a certain way, dealing with certain things. I said, oh God, it's just five years. Can't be feeling this way. And one day was in study, Lord, I lighted a book, said, bring out that book, go to that page. He read it and he solved the problem he needed was solved. He was led at that moment by a leader through a book. Covery. We all need it. It's very day when I meet people, and you know the dangerous thing about covery? The good and it's not about age, it's not about experience, it's the selection of God. Now, I'm not saying just wait around and waiting for God to do mystical thing. No. You must partner with God. God will I lie. Sometimes you might not even know. Like for me, when I started, Pastor Taiwo, everybody calls him different things. Was my pastor, but when it came into deeper than that, I I I know how just God bearing witness in my heart. So sitting down in church, I began to look at it in a different way. Someone was asking me about covenant relationships. I will get in a bit. There are some things that are so divine that it has nothing to do with who the person is, the exposure. The, look at Naomi and Ruth. He, he, see, God chose, like, it's so divine. It's so divine that sometimes the way God will do it, it it's a good example. This man, I've known him for years. He's been a pastor in church. He took me somewhere yesterday. I almost passed out. I, I, I did not believe that place existed. I have known this property for years. I've been to that place. I never knew that an aspect of that place. See, their access um, uh, is opening up doors. It's opening up things. And you, you see, I didn't, I've known this person. Interestingly, he used to, he's also the cousin or the uncle of one of my former bosses when I was in the bank. He said he was so emotional about it. He shared his wife yesterday, and the wife was, oh my, oh my God, I know him, see, I know her. She's also the person's daughter-in-law. Oh my God, what a small world. And immediately I've taken shape. It doesn't matter what, who the man is. What, I, I know this is, I, I, I was asked them on the ministry, I was almost in tears because I asked God for help, and he sent help. He sent help by blessing me with yet another mentor. The same way I needed a mentor, without even knowing I needed, he sent me to you, right? The same way I needed a shift, he blessed me. I've known Apostle Femi for years. I didn't even know what Apostle was in my life, but I know that I used to go, ah, my more one of my leaders, I called him that. But confidently now, I'm able to say, Pastor, Apostle Femi, I don't, he's not just one of my leaders, he's not just a mentor, he's not just, sorry, he's not just a leader, he's my mentor. Is one of my mentors. And I'm doing life and ministry with him, the selection of God. Please desire it. You can say prayer under your breath. And when you when God shows you, I always say that I'm so I didn't know. Honestly, when Pastor died, Pastor died, I didn't know. I couldn't, the way people were checking up on me and coming after me. Even people who tell their friends, please, somebody out of the country said, My friend told me, I just want to check up on you. One of my friends was that guy's your pastor. I'm wondering. Was it that obvious? Did I really talk about him that much? I'm happy. I, I loved loudly. I was led loudly. I there was no there was no mistake. The problem with some of us, there is ambiguity with who is leading us and what is happening. There was no mistake until I was sure who my mentor was. I wasn't throwing the rod around. I would honor and respect people, but I wasn't throwing words around. Until I was sure who my spiritual, I wasn't trained what I am. I'm not just calling everybody mama, mommy, daddy, like we do, right? And it's just crazy chaos. I will respect everybody, honor them, but you see, the setting words, the setting nuances, that is, it means a lot. When I call someone mother, when I call somebody father, when I call somebody leader, when I call somebody mentor, when I saw someone covering, it's not just words I throw around. I mean it. And I still word it. I remember when I just went fountain, some crazy things happened. One of the leaders I had to work with on as a campus was just a crazy experience. That could have made me to leave the place. But God, you know, it's not man that brought me here, so man can take me out. 
And I don't know if that's someone, it's not man that brought me, a man can't take me out. If you like, do it, you can't take me out. It's God that orchestrated this. I have a journey with God. Man can't take me out. So offense, what I think, and, all, and I say that because there are times when the Lord has shown me certain things about certain people, and I'll just keep quiet and I'm watching. Is it possible a lot of people are struggling in life because of lack of alignment with certain relationships the Lord has placed, the Lord want to place, or the ones they have already that are not stewarding? That's that about covering. The next one, son, a friend that's stay closer than a brother. This is another one that we really don't know how to do. A lot of people, I tell people, you must have much, you must have all the streams working in your life. I, I must say, be a spiritual pastor was pastoring me and my spiritual fatherness and everything doesn't mean I was close to you until later in life. So it's not closeness that is the hallmark of sending. It's not just about how close I'm calling them, they are calling me, I send them message, they are on speed that it's eventually God will test your heart. Hey, Ladia Dabash, Elisha, how well can you follow Elijah? Even though Elijah is telling you go back, even though Elijah just threw his mantle and walked away. In this, we're too human, we're too emotion sensitive right now that we don't understand and we are doing honor as idolatry. People, see, eh, I've had people that were more available for me to me than my pastor in terms of closeness and just talking and all. Why? That's not what God said. It wasn't about how many hours they are calling me yet. Those ones are feeling something else in my life, which is great. Ayaka, so fatherhood is where you get, I don't know, I, I, it goes, it's, it's where you get your DNA from. Ay, 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 ay. It's where you get your DNA from. There's a lot of identity that comes with, with fatherhood, with covering. There's something, there's something you make of your kind. You begin to produce of your kind. You, it's not something you do just by social media. Some of us are too quick. But too quick. It's something you're making of your kind. It's not just about the way they're talking. There's a making of a kind. The Bible says the Lord took of, of Moses and threw his spirit on 70 other people. People that were, they started prophesying. You don't joke with these things. I stay in the place of prayer. It was frustrating for a long time. People were calling. I couldn't call. I didn't know what it was. But what was happening, I thank God for my pastor. I am there. I am drinking. I'm showing up. I'm thanking God. I just noticed there's something about when this person says, destiny comes alive in me. Something is stirred up in my spirit. I am empowered. I'm getting clarity. I'm getting understanding. You must understand for those that have been in family for a long time that when I just came to family, I'm like, what? I couldn't hear pastor properly. My pastor speaks, right? We used to speak extremely fast. And is 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 um is he fluctuates a lot in his tone, so one minute is very and next minute, hallelujah and I'm like what is going on here? I don't forget that was when there was a lot of highlights on certain other ministers and all. So I might go for programs and all, but it, even the idea it begins to streamline. Look at how I met Bethel. I didn't need to jump up and down. First of all, brought friend Randy Clark and the revelation for ministry team, the revelation. For ministry team came from Brandy Clark. I will never forget an impartation I received in 2015 and 2016 through Randy Clark and Bill Johnson. I wept like a baby and I heard it. So this is I didn't see some of the things I do, I didn't see it anywhere. Like I'm saying with you, someone like wow, P, I didn't I didn't see this template and God put it on my spirit. And that day I heard the Lord say, raise me a ministry team, raise me a people. I didn't even know what that, how it will look, what it means and all. Now you hear people coming to give testimony. Somebody said to me, my God, PI, the ministry team, the prophetic accuracy of the people, there is a rubbing off. There is a rubbing off. I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm listening to people, I'm almost torn. I'm looking at, it's happening everywhere. And that's why when people just use titles, I, I just smile. There's a lot that we need to learn. Do you understand? So there's something about DNA. But now come to this friend that stay closer. There's something about friend that stay closer as well. So some people have asked the old having covering, but they don't know what it is like. They're used to looking out to people, but they don't know what it's like to relate across board. No. Contemporaries, colleagues, no. It has to be up or down. And that's a very dangerous thing. You need people that can look you in the eye. Call you not just by your title. Call you by your name. Look you in the eye and tell you certain things. You need people where you can put your head down, put your armor down. Sometimes some of you are blessed that something happens to be your friend, but I always like to distinct it because for people that have multi-layer relationship, which is what we'll get to in about maybe two weeks' time, it's a very delicate relationship and not everybody can be entrusted with it because it might destroy you. A friend that can stick closer than a brother. Do you have that? The people you really do life with, 
They honor you for who you for what you do, who you are, but they know you. They see you. A place where you can laugh. A place where you can be yourself. A place where it's not a show or contest of power. A place where you are, there's no old back. You can share your vulnerable. You can pour out. You need that. It's in this space you can you talk about life partner, you talk about friends, and there are different layers. You have friends, you have acquaintances, you have close friends, you have covenant friends. I talked about covenant. I was asking what does covenant friend? I said, well, for me, those are friendships that are divinely orchestrated. It happens also with also the covenant, but this also for friends that people that it has gone beyond your emotions. It has gone beyond what you like, you don't like. It has gone beyond how they look or they look, what they say or they say, and you're still what it. One thing I realized about all these levels of friendship, you have to still what you have a part to play. And of course, we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a helper. I call that kind of relationship support system. Some of the support system, but it might not be your friends, it might not be your covering, but they are there for you. They're your support system. They're interested in you. They're your propellers. They are there to ensure that whatever, God can just put some people, they might be systems, they might be in structures, they are just there. They might be your friends as well. Of course, the friends should be part of you. Some of your covenant friends should be part of your support system, but the Lord can raise people. Your support system can be your driver, your cook. They are part of the support. Your nannies, your, your boss, your they, 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 they might not have that close proximity. They might not have an uh, intimate moment, but they are there. They feel like they are, on, they are sent by God. They are on a mission to be there. Somebody gets us on this morning. In this new land, in this world, the place needs to desire all layers of relationship. You need to desire it in a way that you pray for it and trust God. Don't worry your head about it and say, I don't have this one now, so my life is, mm -mm. that's not the point. Pray about it and trust God to fill your heart with the things you need. So seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added to you, including relationships and friendship. Because I'm going to be teaching us access. Some of us also need to learn. We saw something happening yesterday. We we're having a conversation because you're chatting with somebody on, on WhatsApp and maybe in a group. Does not make all of you have the same level of access or doesn't automatically turn to friendship. Some people have turned people that should actually be just people they learn from or acquaintance or they've turned them into something else. Some of us, you must understand one level of sharing what you say, you know, how you, you know, you can't just add different dynamics to it. And it's not that complicated. It just may be authentic, being aware, and stewarding the relationships you have. If you don't know what a relationship is, just water it. Just, just water it. Take it slow, get to know. Some of us, we rush relationships. We rush relationships. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Yes, boundaries. And I'll get into that. So to summarize that, this introduction is this. You need a leader, you need friendships, and you need support system. I'll take that again. You need leaders, you need a leader or leaders, you need friendships, you need support system. I want to stop there this morning because it's quite longer than that. You need to be able to explore those things. You need a full stream. Well, that's one of the secrets of my life. You need the full stream. You need the full stream busting in your inside. You need the full stream nurturing, pouring into you. You need the full stream blessing you. You need the full stream. You need the full stream. We're going to pray and say, I remember when Apostle Femi said something last year. He said, one of the greatest gifts is when the Lord revealed the person to you. Ask the Lord, who are these people to me? Who are these people to me? What does it mean to me? Where are we going, God, with this? You need the full stream. I'm going to pray this morning. And I want you to just go back and meditate on it. Am I clear? And in case you say happy, I don't even know who my spiritual pastor. I don't know who my I have a pastor. I don't know who my spiritual. Is it possible for a pastor not to be a spiritual father? The people attend certain places that they, that's their pastor might not be who their spiritual father or mother. You know, who we'll gets into all of those dynamics. But the first place you want to be is the Lord God. I I receive the full stream and I become the full stream because also you want to be a friend that's still closer than a brother. You also want to be a blessing to the people that are their fathers. You also want to be a blessing to the support system. Can God trust you? I'm telling you the beauty of this is I've seen how my life has flourished. 
I tell people I'm not hiding out with ministry. I'm not, you know, see, I read a story. And that's why when people are screaming, I'm seeing it happen again. A lot of people are not building for long term. It's just here and now. Our gifts here and now. Um, Amy McPherson, as powerful as Fosper was, when she died, she died in pain. In fact, she 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 was drug abused. So now they don't whether they don't say it was suicide, whether it was she, she used a particular drug, maybe an overdose of a drug. Someone said it might not have been intentional, whatever the case was. But this one was literally, I believe, was dealing with depression. Was imagine you have done these mighty things. What do you know who Amy McPherson was? Hollywood was coming to um Los Angeles Temple to study her. She was we are doing prop today. Oh, this lady was like she was beautiful, she was top-notch. Talk about healing, talk about music, talk about miracles, signs and wonder. In fact, was she was kidnapped by KKK. They took her away to come and minister to them. And they brought her back. Strange things, but she had problems. The one guy she loved died, and she had mind issues. She was battered by different people. And for me, it breaks my heart that we are so full of the Spirit of God, but there are areas, so areas, emotional areas, that a lot of believers don't get right. And sometimes, guess what? It begins to impact other areas of their life. Towards the end of her life, she wasn't talking to her mom. She was, she, her relationship with her mom was completely strained. She didn't have people she had. She didn't have friends. And I see it happening again. A very audit your relationships. This person you call for, is it because of what they can just do? But do you love who they are? Do you enjoy who they are? And friendship is on, across the different levels. I have people that we might not talk for you, but when we see, we connect. We honor ourselves. We we, we just honor ourselves. That's fine. I'm not, you can't make a best friend of everybody. Is is For lack of a better word, I don't think it's, it makes sense. Because you don't have what it takes to navigate that deep level of relationship on many on many fronts. But you, even if you don't, I'm not talking about best friend. You don't have to be best friend to enjoy good friendships. You can just even get to know people. You can be a blessing. You can have good laughs. Most of the past revivalists, if you restore, if you check their lives, this was one area that they failed. Ah, I always pray. May I not fight while well, taking nations, taking nations, and I'll get there. I look around, all this, you want to go back, all these, all these quotes that is from God forgive me. A lot of people that talking about people's sad experiences. You need support system. I have not seen one person that is soaring. That is, is because they don't have support system. You you need it. From, from friends to your parents to you need a solid support system to thrive. Because that's how God has created us for community. So you want to pray this morning. I say, Lord Jesus, I want to enjoy the full stream you've created. Even like the garden, water by four streams. It's not only your mentor alone that should point to your life. Some of you are so okay with people you look up to. But you know that when you have colleagues, friends that are your contemporaries, you know that that's a challenge. Some of you are not ready for it. Some of you love being a mentor. You don't know what it is like to be a friend. And some of you enjoy being a mentee. You don't know what it is like to take responsibility and look after people. If you even know that a mentor-mentee relationship is not just a mentor giving, even as someone following you, you have to be a blessing. Some things I learned. There's some prayers. When I laugh about it, I tell people, I wish I recorded some things that happened. You know, if I had known about certain things, it would laugh at me. See, do you understand what that blessing you received? So I received some sigh of, of good, ah, Mrs. Shah, that, ah, that's a, a father, a, a leader. Shah, ah, let me see. Ah, God. And all they can utter is God bless her. I have, I said, Lord, I will be a source of joy to the people you have sent me to that, that are covering me. Like when it, I will not add, I don't want to add to the people that will give them problem. No, not, not that. Lord. So deal with me, leave me. I don't want to be part of what I say, God, do, ah, let me see again. Only one show. Ah. Or I, I had to their pain. Never, never, never. I want to be of blessing to them. I start calling myself blessed. And this is a cross board from my sister to my mother to a, a cross board is a commitment I've made to God, to my husband and to the glory of God, God is helping me. That when they think about me, all that comes from, from either laughter to ah, this girl shot to ah, God bless her. I see your hand though. That is what I want to be. And that's what you want to pray. And that's what I am reaping as well. So I want to pray this morning. I say, Father, I'm ready. This I'm telling you that we're about to enter will shake some of us. It will realign some of our thoughts. 
Some of us, God forbid, on a path of loneliness if you don't take, and I say this with a sense of responsibility and not in my spirit. Some people, you're in a path of loneliness. Your husband alone is your friend. Your wife alone is your friend. It's not enough. Hear me. I'm not saying go out and be looking for friends. It's great. It's not bad. But there are streams. Some of us is out of fear, out of pain of what we have been through as make us keep certain narratives. I'm not asking you to share your secret with your abon and that person I just talk to, not for the sake of that, but streams that you can pour into. Some of you have become like a dam. And after a while, a dead sea becomes dead because it's not giving life. Even you, having people you can sacrifice for, having people that you can you can do life with, laugh with, go out of your way with, you know, just be there. It does something to you. It does something to your system. I don't care if you just become suspicious in place of discernment. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask. If what you guys don't know, can we just omit your mic and just say something to God? Lord, I'm ready for this journey. I'm ready for what it will look like. I'm ready for the demands that will come with it. Relationships can be messy. It can be very demanding. It can be very messy, but Lord, I'm ready. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Somebody pray this morning. Lord, I would receive all the full stream. I will receive the full stream. I give the full stream. Areas that are not clear, Lord, you give me clarity. As to who is who in my life, what I represent, who they represent in the name of Jesus. I enjoy the full flow. I enjoy the full stream. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name of prayer. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning, everybody. Have you been blessed? I hope you're blessed by that. Um, we would keep, we're starting this journey and it's going to take us a while. I'm going to have a panel. I'm going to have QA Saturday. I'm looking to bring in different um, practical experiences as well so that we can steward it. Some of us, we just need, some of us fear. You're afraid, you're guarding your heart so jealously. If you're not careful, you're guarding the people away from you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, we still have the 9 a.m. watch, the 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9. And I believe God, as we go on this journey on Saturdays to the end of the year, is going to do something. I feel like God is very intentional because we're entering into a new year and all this new me, new you. And some of us just need to, some of you already have those people in your life, but they don't look like it. And God wants to teach you how to nurture it. And it's something, and I don't, as you listen to this teaching, you're receiving an invitation. Because I wish I could tell you something I am living is, is my, my daily living. I have scars. I have cried tears. I have, uh, oh my God. Yet, I have seen the blessings of God. I'm telling you, my greatest testimony, aside salvation, my family, is my relationships. Part of the reason why we don't spend what we should spend for a lot, every program we do is relationships. I had to learn it. I mean, it's a goodwill, good name. It's how you steward the relationships forever opens doors for you. Not, not going up beyond boundaries, respecting boundaries. At the same time, I've learned. I also, for a long time, did not put boundaries in place and I got bonds and the Lord taught me. What's the difference between boundaries and walls? Some of you say you have boundaries, but what you have is walls wired walls around your heart. I believe as we engage this journey, next couple of weeks, you'll see your life blows. And so listen every time with your heart open because beyond what I can say, you're receiving an invitation. And the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Like Ugo taught us, some of you have to stop saying, me, I don't do friendship. Oh, stop it. You have to stop all those funny talk. Ah, me, I don't, women, ah, ladies, Remember one day I took her and said something. In fact, she collects that day. I, I, I'm sure she, she knows better now. And her life is changed for it. I mean, I don't do ah, uh, men, ah. Uh, <laughs> men are my friends. Women, they are wise too much. Ah, uh, men, oh my God. Man, don't me. All this funny con constructs I will embrace. Amen. All right. God bless you all. Have a great day.